I'm editing, but um, somebody, somebody is fine. What are you doing? so good I decided to take a shower with them so far they've only ever been here on the top and sat there and they haven't necessarily gotten wet but they've gotten all like fluffy like they are gonna get wet from the shower this will be the first time getting way more wet taking a shower with me so unfortunately you guys won't see that video but um you'll definitely see the after and we'll see if it was good or not if it was successful <laughs> So they did good. They were quiet the whole time. Lefty was more into it than Touche by far. And I didn't go crazy. I didn't want to like completely soak them or anything. But they're pretty wet. Pretty wet. They didn't hate it. So that was a goal. So next time we'll go for wetter. <laughs> Sounds like Pee Wee sometimes. Good. Come on. Good boy, Touche. You come? Good job. Should we work on something new? What do we work on? What are you trying to train him right now? He's just really um he gets really freaked out really easily. So I'm just trying to get him to stay chill and calm and he's super interested in training, so. He's funny. Yeah. The tricky thing about him is when he talks, he's really heightened. So as cute as it sounds and you want to like interact, it's, it, it's uh, almost like. It's, you need to calm, let him calm down. Yeah. Hey everyone, Jamie Lee here, and I just wanted to say a big thank you for watching my series here on YouTube about Touche the Indian Ringneck Parrot. Now, Touche is known as a, what I call a project bird, which is a bird that I'm able to work with with no charge to the rescue that I got him from or the new owners or any previous owners that were ever involved in his life. So this is something that I am able to offer my training expertise to these birds with no cost involved to anybody. And the cool thing about this is it's really where my passion comes from because I love sharing these birds' transformations and what I learned from them because they're really the best teachers uh, with all of you. So if this kind of content interests you and you'd like to consider supporting Project Birds, please go over to patreon.com forward slash bird tricks and consider being a patron of Project Birds. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the video. So was he in a where he got kind of messed up. He was in a home and the lady just decided she was ready to move on from birds. She didn't really like him. She clipped his wings really bad so that he'd walk everywhere instead of fly. Um, and he's only two, so it was really sad. And the other one's 16. And 
he, his owner died unexpectedly in a car accident. And the family didn't know how to take care of birds, so they surrendered him to a rescue. And he just sat in the cage and would go to like the back and just wouldn't interact with anybody. So nobody wanted to adopt him because he just showed no well, interest in anybody. Yeah, and he's fantastic. Well, so. It hasn't taken that long, right? No. I was pretty much sick when I brought him home, and Capri just started working with him like right away. Yeah. And he hadn't even like stepped up for me by then. Oh my God. And I was like, was what'd so you do? And she's like, well, I went over to him and asked him to step up because I really wanted him to, and he did. And then I wanted to pet him, so I tried to pet him, and he let me. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, that's amazing. It's like, two days of like hanging wow. out with this bird and not getting anywhere like that. This is super funny. I was just like, okay. That's really neat. Okay, so I wanted to update you guys on the whole cageless thing and how it's going in regards to, I guess, both Touche and Lefty, because it's pretty much the same. Um, the fact that Touche flies and he literally torpedoes around the house, sometimes he looks like and appears to be in complete control, other times it's questionable. It freaks me out having a flighted bird in the house that's not free flight recall trained. I'm like, oh. This is stressful. How do people do this? <laughs> um, I'm constantly worried about doors opening and stuff. And not that we aren't super mindful of it with our own birds, but worst case, we've had a lot of times where our own birds get out and it's not a big deal because they are recall trained. So for these guys, it's really high stress for that and, uh, and having them in the house. Sorry about that. Uh, notifications are now silenced. Um, the other, so I'm going to go over the pros and cons basically of this cageless lifestyle <clears throat> because there's less pros. I'll go over those first. There's really only two that I could come up with. And if you guys see more, tell me, uh, I might just not have thought of them. The two I can come up with is the first one is interaction. It's constant interaction based on the cageless lifestyle, which is great because we're trying to establish a relationship. Um, so that's really, really important up front, right out the door. So that's awesome. The second awesome thing is the flight. I'm getting way more flight out of Lefty. <laughs> he was literally hanging upside down from his play stand right now. Um, <laughs> do you need help? 
Nope, he's got it. Okay, uh, so flight is the other thing. They are both learning to use flight as a means of transportation, which is what makes them a bird and will teach them confidence and ability. So um, I love that. I totally love those two things a lot. However, <laughs> the cons to the cageless lifestyle is the um, new level of stress. <laughs> like my stress level is just higher because I'm constantly worried somebody's gonna leave a door open and they're gonna get out and they have no idea how to get back. Um, <laughs> the skill level is not there for recall training yet. Like neither of them can even maneuver where they need to. Um, so that that's crazy. Also the dangers just because there's no way to 100% uh, parrot proof a house. So you just have to constantly make sure that you're giving them awesome play stands and places to be that aren't dangerous but the fact that they have the ability to go to the dangerous places is like ee. um the lack of sleep so our setup in our garage is amazing because we have lights on timers and then i can open and close the main door so they get natural sunlight and air and all that stuff uh fresh air i should say <laughs> it's not like airtight in there uh <laughs> So anyways, uh, the point is, is they get 12 hours of uninterrupted sleep in there. Wow, with birds just in the house, humans obviously don't need 12 hours. And so these guys, I feel like even though they start settling at 7 p.m., I don't feel like they're getting 12 hours of sleep. And I think it's safe to say they're not. And that part sucks because it's really hard. And because I'm going cageless, I'm not even doing the sleeper cage. The good news is they're not affected by it but it's a downside for me knowing that they should be getting 12 hours and not providing it. I'm like, ooh, and it's pretty close. I will say like we all settle down at 7 a.m., uh, 7, 7 p.m. Wow, okay, I hope you guys are following this because I am just, I don't know. Um, anyways, we start settling down at 7 p.m. And so everybody's just kind of chilling at 7 p.m., but we're not actually asleep until probably like nine. So, and then we all wake up early around six. So it's not quite enough. So that's a downside for the cageless stuff for sure. Um, it also took them a period to get used to. They're way more content sleeping in my room uh, on play stands than they are out in like the living room or something. Sorry, you're fluffing up. I thought you were gonna poop. Okay, the other downside, and I hate this, they are little human food mongers. So, Lefty is not bad. This guy though, holy cow. And I didn't realize that he came from a diet of like french fries and... What was the other thing you ate? Uh, it was human foods and it was not good human food. So he knows, he knows like what lasagna is and he goes nuts. Um, he knows all the human foods and it's so annoying and I literally like we all end up hiding and eating hiding or I'll just put him somewhere like give him a shower or something while we're all eating dinner but it's a pain like not cool um <clears throat> so that part is a, a con for sure the other crappy part is cooking um I don't bring my birds out when I'm cooking, but having birds out all the time and not being able to cook, Dave has stopped me so many times and been like, babe, the birds are out. And I'm like, hey, um, he just walked across my computer. Um, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm just not, oh, I'm not used to it. Freaks me out. Uh, yeah, not cool. I'm sure Touche will torpedo back here any minute. Um, so I'll try to get my last thought out <laughs> as quickly as I can. Uh, so the last thing that I came up with on my con list is the mess. The mess is real. Uh, they have their play stands. He's back. Uh, but the play stands don't catch everything. So, and my carpet hides it really well, but it drives me crazy. There's like pellets, pellet powder, pellet everything all over the carpet, there's, um, you know, they, they train in multiple places, so there'll be like poop on the table, poop on the chairs, poop on the whatever, and I'm just like, ah! Uh, so, 
So the mess is real. They eat on the play stands, they train at different areas in the house, and I try to have them on little training perches that catch most of it, but you know, at the same time, I'm having them like walk around and stuff. So the mess is real. I wouldn't, I mean, I would do the cageless lifestyle again temporarily and I want you guys to understand that this is temporary this is not gonna go on forever this is just right now um, I think that it would be really easy if I implemented cages to to just let life get carried away and forget to hang out with them and make the time whereas with them cageless you're forced to make the time because things just happen and you have to act right then and there um, and that's why I'm doing it is to make sure that all that happens because otherwise I'm I have so much to do <laughs> so this is keeping me present and um, and into the training and constantly working with them it's also allowing them to communicate to me that like hey I want to interact hey I want to train and those are really the best times to do that so allowing them to tell me that at any point is really beneficial to our upfront relationship and getting the most training in in the amount of time that I have. So that's why I'm doing it. I'm also doing it because with quarantine you want to keep your birds and the new birds in separate air spaces. So my birds are outside, these guys are inside, so it's as safe as I could possibly make it. Um, after the 30 days though, and I am counting down, uh, I definitely want to start putting them in the aviary <laughs> so obviously I tried it with lefty and lefty's great in the aviary and if I need to go somewhere I can put them in my outdoor aviaries for sure um, there was also a time a day I should say a night or whatever we had a show about an hour and a half away and so I rotated birds all sorts and was able to put them in the aviaries in my garage <clears throat> and that went really well you guys remember how I told you that when I went to get Touche out of the outdoor aviary, he like acted like a wild aviary bird. Um, he did the same thing in the indoor aviary. And I was like, you know what, this is BS. I went, got my training pouch on, got my clicker, got my target stick, walked back in, targeted him around the aviary and he just like snapped out of it. He went from wild crazy bird to, oh, I'm training, I'm targeting, I'm doing this. We worked on step up training, he was totally calm. One of the things that I think was playing a role when he was in the outdoor aviary is that I did like hold his little tiny feet and I covered his back. Um, this is because I'm very uncomfortable holding little birds feet. If my macaws try to fly and I have their feet, I feel fine about it. They're like nice and strong and sturdy. But if it happened with a small bird, I would be nervous that they could have an injury. Um, so that's why I do the extra thing of putting my hand on top. And he hates that. I mean, he doesn't bite me, but I can feel that he's uncomfortable about it. And the cool thing about the indoor aviary when I did that, um, and it's a lot of cleaning and stuff, so not doing it uh, other than when I had to figure out a way. Um, but the cool thing about when I did make it work was that taking him in and out, I didn't have to hold his feet um, and he stayed super calm and collected and on my hand and that was really, really good transition. So I think after the 30 days when I can start working with the indoor aviary more so, it'll be really, really good for this guy especially. But something I read about them and I feel like is true is it's like if you let them go a while without interaction they like almost become wild again I feel like that's true I feel like I have to constantly start over and, and we start over and we go faster but still feels like we're starting over quite a bit um, so I don't know if it's because I'm, it probably is, because I'm doing primarily a lot of the training with Touche, uh, but he was totally freaked out by Dave's presence. Dave was only here two days or something, so we didn't have any time to work on any of it. Um, and then he's actually not being very good for Capri right now either. So I did some touch training with Capri. I wish I would have got the initial part of the session on video for you guys because he didn't even want to come near her. So I was clicking and rewarding and just targeting around her arm and it was a major breakthrough when he actually made contact with her arm to touch the stick. Now if he can hold it. Okay. Stay still. 
okay. Good. See? See? I got that part. Okay, move your arm. <clears throat> okay, now put your arm back. Did that hurt? No, but his claws are from the first. And that hurts me. Okay, can you put your arm out again? Just on top with him. Yeah, try lifting up just barely. Good. Now put it down. Good. That's it. Oh. Thank you, Capri. No. Thanks, Charlie. I feel like training is easier to undo with this species. So, like you mess it up or you push the boundary, it's like way back 10 steps for you. What is that game where if you go a certain, you like do a certain thing and then you end up sliding back down? I think it's shoots and ladders. It feels like you literally are climbing ladders of progress and then when there's a screw up, you literally hit a slide and you just go all the way back down. That's how it feels working with this species. And um, it's, it's hard, <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, I get why people get these guys. Their voices are super compelling. They're beautiful. This would not be the species for me, I have to say. I think you have to be a certain type of person. I know I've said this before, but I think certain people are meant for certain species of birds and all animals. I think certain people are, are meant for certain breeds of dog and <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, this is not my species. I'm gonna be super honest. Like I'm enjoying my time with him, but this is definitely not my species. This is uh, this is the type of species that kind of reminds me of cockatoos and military macaws and the other types of species that are easily heightened and hard to bring down. I will say the touch training and the target training has been my biggest tool with him and is what I'm going to continue to use with him. Um, I'm going to work intentionally with Capri and Dave first because he's too um, he's too complicated for the average person. So I gotta work with Capri and Dave first, people that I can control, quote unquote, um, and that understand they need to be quiet and still and, and all those things. And I think if I can slowly expand that out, it'll be better. But, um, and Dave could even teach him tricks, which would be fantastic. So I'm gonna work from there. Lefty, I feel like, is ready to move outside of our family for socialization, but uh, not this guy. And how cool is this? I'm using my grandma's car and it has a built-in perch, guys. Like this, this is awesome. She likes it. Pretty cool.